All right, Tech Talk Take Two. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm here today to talk about WebGL and 3.js, uh, pretty much walking through a basis for uh, making a case for 3D on the web, and then talking a bit about technologies and what 3.js can do to ease your 3D workflows on the web. Uh, so a general overview, 3.js is a high-level JavaScript wrapper for WebGL. Uh, long story short, WebGL is a very low-level, uh, kind of heavy tool to work with. Uh, 3.js makes it a lot easier for uh, developers who are interested in developing a game, a 3D model, or some type of interactive storytelling. Uh, they can access WebGL calls very easily uh, in JavaScript language. Um, so just to walk through, uh, before we get into the examples, I want to discuss the 3D stigma. There's obviously a stigma in data visualization, which is a huge part of, of course, 2D versus 3D, uh, abstraction versus interaction, et cetera. Um, in this slide here, you can see that uh, we have a lot of occlusion. We have perspectival distortion. Uh, a lot's going on, and not much is legible. So there are a few other issues, too. Obviously, the dreaded pie chart is even worse if it's taken to 3D. Uh, you start to have perspectival distortion. The angles do not seem uh, like they're truly objective here. You can see that the white slice is taking up more screen real estate, and it's also uh, governing a larger angle. So you can start to introduce biases there unintentionally. Uh, but there's a case where 3D works really well, even in data visualization. Um, for one example, you can, if it's curated properly, you can do this with interactive storytelling. Uh, the New York Times, while they kind of refrain from doing it a lot, uh, they have a, a lot of really exciting 3D interactive graphics uh, where you're really navigating around a graph and it's becoming much more legible in that way. So if we just jump over to that graphic real quick. Now here you see, you know, we have a 3D graph, but it's kind of curated in that you can go uh, from step to step. It's really a series of two-dimensional steps in which it's revealing something new about the data analysis. So it allows the user to interact with this in 3D, but it, it allows the expert to reveal those conclusions uh, across each step. This is a this is a graph representing uh, bond rates in different countries over time. Uh, and then jumping over to uh, some sleeker designs, 3D interaction of product design uh, starting to consider. Again, uh, iterating between these 2D drawings in a 3D way makes it more intuitive, but that abstraction of the 2D is still there. Uh, so we can see the annotations are clear. I can also freely move around. Uh, but then we go back to that that curated uh, experience again. All right, similar style with annotation. You can imagine how this would get into education uh, with anatomy. Uh, really beautiful graphics here. So you can see the case for 3D kind of extending beyond games and sleek charts. Uh, this would be great for a med student to, to study anatomy. Uh, also, there's immersive space. Rather than studying objects, you can put yourself inside the space and look at things in 3D, et cetera. But let's jump forward and, and look at a little demo for how to quickly get set up with 3D. We're going to start with a simple 3D rotating cube with a couple of lights and different colored faces. Um, in WebGL, this might be a little difficult to read, but that's kind of intentionally set up. Uh, this is how you would set up that scene in WebGL. There are a lot of different calls here. Uh, load identity several times is called clear color, enabling depth test. Uh, all this stuff gets pretty cumbersome. It's not very streamlined. It's, a, again, a very low-level language. Uh, you can start to make sense of where we're declaring lights and their vectors, um, you know, different types of lights, and how we're defining our geometry. And this is actually just one face of the geometry that we're defining. And we'd have to repeat it five more times to make this full cube. 3.js, on the other hand, uh, streamlines all of this into a couple of easy calls. Um, so we're binding our WebGL renderer to a document element, which will be a canvas. Uh, and we're appending a renderer to that canvas. Um, then you start, to, you start to work with functions that are a lot more understandable. Uh, new 3 perspective camera, right? So you can infer that that means we're defining a camera, its location on the screen, its viewport, its depth of field, et cetera. Uh, we're also defining geometry, not with a series of vertices and meshes, but by just saying box geometry, width, 
uh, length and height. <coughs> and then we're defining our materials uh, and appending that to the geometry, adding it to the scene, and then finally adding our lights. So really quickly, you can get up and running. Uh, there's a whole host of examples online for 3JS. Uh, it's at 3JS.org slash examples. And that's a wrap. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. I haven't... Um,